CSS is more powerful than you think. With the latest features, you can create some great interactivity without need of JavaScript. And you know what? You can create your own CSS timer without JS. It would be a bit trickier, and you probably want to create it with JavaScript, but I urge you to take this challenge and create it with me. Now, you might be wondering why you choose CSS over JavaScript for a regular timer. In some rare cases, the JavaScript can be disabled on the user agent and the CSS timer will still function in this situation. Emails typically don't support JavaScript, so a CSS timer could be a creative way to display a countdown on your another great email campaign. Building a timer with CSS is a fun challenge that will push your understanding of the language. What are the prerequisites? The first, you should know CSS counters. This allows us to create and manipulate a numeric value within the style sheet. The second one is property keyword. This keyword defines a custom property that can hold various data types. The third, pseudo elements. We will use after pseudo element to create a visual representation of the timer. And the last one is CSS keyframes. And this would be an essential for creating animations in CSS. All right, we're on Venus code and we don't have anything, any file in our project. Let's start by creating an index.html file as a starting point. By tapping an exclamation mark, we create a basic HTML structure. And inside the body, we'll use h2 tag and put CSS timer title. And for now, we just need a div element with a class of timer. Now hit save and let's start the live server to open it up in the browser. Now let's create a style CSS file. First, let's define some base styles for our HTML structure. Let's start with the body tag. And here we'll use a CSS grid, height to 100 viewport height. We'll set gap to 2rem, text align center, place content to center, font family send serif, and we'll disable the default margin on the body element. Let's import our style CSS file here. Hit save and you'll see that our styles are applied to our HTML file. Let's continue adding some basic styles. Let's bypass the margin on the heading element. And here we'll define styles for the after element of our timer container. So we type dot timer after for now, I set content to an empty string. This will block font size to 8 RAM, line height to 1, height to 1 line height, text line center, aspect ratio to make it like a square. Now we define a border, solid for pixels, and my favorite blue color, border radius, and some padding. Now let's start building the CSS timer functionality. Let's define a custom property using property keyword called two dashes number. This property will hold the value for our countdown timer with an initial value of zero. And here we need to define a syntax and type integer. Next we type inherits to false and set initial value to zero. Next let's define keyframes for our animation. Keyframes count and we'll animate our number from 5 to 0. So this animation will decrease the value of the number property from 5 to 0 when we run our animation. In order to run this animation, let's attach it to our after element. So first that we should do is to reset the value using the counter reset. Now we need to pass the number property and the value the current value using the calc function 0 plus number variable. Next we attach an animation with our count keyframes count 5 seconds linear and then we set a content property so we don't need it here counter using counter function and pass down our number property. And now you will see that when we open our page or 
refresh, it runs our timer from 5 to 0. And you can count down from 10 to 0 as well by setting 10 here and the animation duration to 10 seconds. Save and it still works. Now our timer runs when we open the page, but we can create a button that will act as a start button for our timer. And again, we won't use JavaScript here. Let's go back to the HTML file and create an input checkbox. Let's use the name run id run and create a label for run and that's it. Now we need to start the timer when the checkbox is checked. So let's move to CSS and use some CSS selectors for this approach. For now I will cut those three lines of code and the timer is hidden for now. And how do I make it work when the checkbox is checked? We need to select the input with type of checkbox when it's checked. And when it's checked, we use the sibling selector to select our timer so after element and pass down those three lines. Hit save and actually let's use an empty content property here to display the borders and the element itself but without the timer for now. And let's try to toggle the checkbox. And you see that when the checkbox is checked, the timer runs. If I uncheck it, the timer stops. But you know what? The default checkbox looks ugly. We can add some more CSS styles. First, let's style our label element. Let's add a background color. Text color will be white. Let's add a padding, a border radius, and a cursor pointer when we hover over the label element. Hit save and you will see this button here. But now it's without text and we can add text dependent on the checkbox status, whether it's check it or not. And for that we will also use CSS selectors. So we type input, type checkbox. If it's not check it, we select a sibling label after element and set a content to start timer. Hit save. And now when the checkbox is unchecked, you will see a start timer on our label element. And the same goes for the check it checkbox, but without the not keyword. And here we'll type stop timer. And if I check the checkbox, It's not working, so let's remove this, yes. When the checkbox is checked, you'll see a stop timer button and the timer runs. If I uncheck, you will see a start timer text and you can click on the label as well. It, it will work the same. And if I need to stop the timer, I click on the label, which is our button. And now we can hide our input to use only the label for our button. So we select the input, type checkbox, we'll use position absolute, write 100%, opacity to zero, hit save, and here our button. If I need to start the timer, I click it, the timer runs, and in order to stop it, I uncheck the checkbox and the timer stops. It can be customized even more for your needs of your website, of your email campaign, depending on your needs. That's it. If you found this CSS challenge helpful and interesting, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps me to stay motivated in the long run. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.